welcome to episode three of the Cute and Crusty Crafts podcast. I'm Shaylin, and I am coming here from the Nogajewanog uh, territory, which is also known as Peterborough in Ontario, Canada. Um, oh, there's a cat coming in. Hello, come on up here. Oh, there's a child. Is she coming? I don't know if you can see her, but my cat's joined the party. Hello. Say hi. Oh, she doesn't like this one bit. There you go. All right. What was I saying? Oh, yes. This podcast is a place for me to uh, talk about my... Oh, my goodness. Your tail. Uh, it's a place for me to talk about my knitting and my yarn addiction. Um, and I thought I... Minnie, come on. Come on. What? <laughs> uh, this is a place... Wait, no. Um, I thought I would start by showing you my finished objects. There are quite a few because I have, it's been a while since I did the last podcast. Um, it was August, I think was the last time. And now it's October. It's actually Thanksgiving day here in Canada. Uh, so I've gotten quite a few things done um I got a pile here um there's a few things that I don't have because they're in the wash because I've been wearing them um but yeah let's get going on that um the first one I have is my camisole number three by uh my favorite things knitwear it is it still has like I still need to weave in all the ends. I finished this like a month ago and I still haven't woven in the ends. But um, yeah, so this is done um, in a brioche stitch, which is my first time ever doing that. Um, it was interesting to say the least. I find brioche like eats up yarn. So I think this was like three and a bit skeins of the yarn. Um, what yarn did I use? It was the Burnett uh, Softy Cotton yarn. So it's a cotton and acrylic blend. And I think this color is in sandstone. When I got it, I thought it was gonna be a little bit more terracotta colored than it ended up being, but I still really like how it turned out. And I really like the design on the front, um, the triangle shapes with the decreases and the increases. Um, it's a little bit tight on the bottom on me. Um, I think cause I used a thicker yarn than what was recommended. I kind of just used what I had. Um, but I'm really happy with how it looks. I think it looks pretty cute, but again, haven't really worn it because I won't wear an item if I don't weave in the ends cause I'm crazy, but sometimes it takes me a long time to do it cause it's my least favorite part of knitting definitely my least favorite part but yeah maybe I'll maybe I'll leave in the ends today but yeah um I found with brioche as is probably well known it's very difficult to pick up a stitch if you drop a stitch so there's probably a lot of mistakes it doesn't actually look too bad here but I know in my heart that there are mistakes but that's okay um the pattern was really easy to follow i think was that no it wasn't my first my favorite things knitwear pattern i worked on but this was the first like garment because i've done um the beret and then the scarf so this was quite fun and i have been working on another my favorite things knitwear cardigan which i will show you in my whips all right what is next oh yeah i have this is my Raffia Bucket Hat by Delia Creates. It was a free pattern that I found on the interwebs. And yeah, it turned out pretty cute. My first time, oh, I think that's, that is the back. Okay, so this was my first time working with Raffia. And it's kind of cute. I think the brim's a little bit funky. Um, I think... I, I can't remember if I made changes to this pattern. I probably did. I often do. Um, but I really like how the shape turned out. I think it's it's kind of, you know, it's kind of rough. But it's my first time working with Raffia and it's like, it's not the ugliest thing in the world. Um, I think it was done with um, half double crochet. 
um, I did a swatch before I did this because it said you don't want to like pull it too tight when you're crochet. Oh yeah, this is crochet by the way. Um, you don't want to pull too tight on the raffia, um, otherwise you can break it. Um, but yeah, I didn't have a problem with it. I found I had to crochet a lot looser uh, because the really tightness made the hat teeny teeny tiny. Um, but yeah, after a couple go arounds, I ended up with something that I'm happy with. Um, yeah, oh yeah, the raffia was uh, Wool in the Gains Raw Raw Raffia by, or in uh, Desert Palm. So it's kind of just that typical tan color. They have a few other colors that I'm kind of interested in. There was like a green color, but I thought I would start off with the more tan color. This little, I don't know what that's doing, but yeah. I hope that didn't mess up my hair. No, it looks fine. All right, next thing, I have a beanie. Oh my God, okay, it did mess up my hair a little bit. Okay, next thing I have is a beanie. This is the broom hat um, by Melody Hoffman. Um, I am a patron to her on Patreon, um, so she posts um, a lot of her patterns there which is cool, and this was one of them. Uh, so this is just a pretty basic beanie. It's got the, um, it's more like toque-like. It has the, the kind of rounded shape on the top. Um, do I have this the right way? I'm pretty sure I do. Um, and then the increases in the center. It's kind of hard to see because I did use like a marled, or I guess twisted, a twisted yarn. Um, so I believe this is a Bernat acrylic yarn. Um, this was kind of a stash busting project and just started um, making Christmas gifts. I'm trying to be good this year and actually start it before the month of December. Um, so this one is for somebody special. Um, but I I didn't obviously didn't use the yarn that was recommended. Um, so I may have made it a little bit shorter, but the person that it's for kind of likes to wear their hats that way. So I'll, I'll just put it on. Ooh, bangs. So yeah, turned out pretty pretty cute, if I do say so myself. Um, I'm pretty sure, I don't think I'd made any changes to this. But yes, I definitely made it shorter than what it was supposed to be. Because when she wears it in the photo on the pattern, it kind of, it has that like stuff that's that part that's not on your head which I really like the look of that I usually wear my my beanies like that but I think the person that this is for will like the shape of this hat so yeah um add that to the pile I keep putting on the hats and then messing up my hair but sorry if I look sweaty I just came back from like a really long walk I went down to um, a park. I did like a nice long, long walk and I sat by the river and knitted for a while and it was lovely. Um, but yeah, next project. This is kind of like a two things, but, um, this is the open edge tee and shorts, um, by Jessie Mae Designs. So I managed to finish, uh, the top and the shorts and they're really freaking cute so I did the top first and I'm so happy with how it turned out I think it's so cute I've been wearing it non-stop it was really great for days when it was really warm out because the yarn I used is the sugar butch cabot yarn in grassy fields and it is 70% uh, pima cotton and 30% linen so nice and breezy it's got a really nice drape to it as well um, and then it's got the, um, the open edge aspect. Um, so it has like a, a two yarn overs and then you drop it, um, in the next row and it looks so cute. And the, the, uh, the V-neck collar is really cute. It does kind of roll over cause it is just knit and stock in it, but I don't mind it. I think it looks really cute. Um, and then I did the shorts, which the shorts knit up so quickly. I feel like I just did them so fast. They're a little bit stretched out because I uh, wore them to sleep last night. Um, but yeah, they're so freaking cute. Look at those little knit shorts. 
Oh, they're so cute. Um, and they have, uh, they have like a casing for the, uh, the drawstring, which is really cute. But yeah, I think I kind of wish I had knit them in a smaller size because the cotton really does stretch out quite a lot, but it's fine. And this stuff, you, since it's like has a linen blend, you can put it in the washing machine. I probably wouldn't put it in the dryer, but because I'm, I don't want to wreck my stuff. But um, yeah, the yeah, it's really stretched out, so maybe that'll shrink it a little bit. Um, but yeah, I think the little drawstring—it's just so cute. It just looks so cute. And then the set together, I just feel very put together because you know matching sets are very popular these days. So. I think that's all my finished objects, which is quite a few for me, um, especially since I was back to work, which was really nice. And, um, but I still spent a lot of time knitting, like a crazy amount. <laughs> um, but yeah, I guess we will move on to my whips or my works in progress. Um, where am I gonna start? It's all behind the camera and it is a mess. <laughs> all right, so I guess I will grab, oh, the thing that's been, oh, wait for a while, hi. <laughs> I'm gonna get up in your face. Um, so I have been working on this, um, Eden top. It's a crochet top. It's more of a summer top. Um, but I still haven't freaking finished it just because I I literally just have to do the straps and that's it. And I've just been like, I don't want to do it. And also, because it is a summer crop top made out of cotton, it's like probably not going to be wearing it for much longer. But yeah, so this is the Eden crop top. I made another one of them a while back um, with another cotton one, but I had like three different colors in it because I was running out of yarn and I didn't realize how much yarn it was going to take um so it's got like kind of striping to it and I'm not super in love with it I might I might frog it back but um I definitely like this one a lot better I really like the white um it is what yarn is this I have it written down it is lily sugar and cream cotton in soft ecru and I really, I've been really drawn to neutrals these days, so I really love the look of the white. Uh, again, uh, v-neck ribbed, and then I just, I literally just need to crochet the straps, and then I'll be done. Um, oh, with the, and then sew down the, um, the front parts, but yeah. Again, I did make this one before, and not only did I do it in a yarn that I didn't really love, but I also, again, didn't have enough so I did like a straight back because it because the front and the back are the same um but I didn't have enough yarn so I just did the triangle in the front and then um straight in the back but I think just with the design of this because it's kind of it's kind of flat um it was like gaping really weird so I ended up stitching it and I'm still super happy with it so I should just rip it out but I followed the pattern. Sometimes people actually know what they're doing when they write a pattern. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's actually like really soft. I the it always says that the Lily Sugar and Cream yarn is supposed to be for like household stuff, like dish dish like dishcloths and stuff. But I think it's really nice. And oh, look at those even crochet rows. Your girl knows what she's doing sometimes. Crochet is not my main. Well, like, I, I do a lot more knitting uh, than I do crochet, and I only really learned how to crochet um, during the pandemic, so it's kind of newer to me, but I think it looks pretty good. That's all I have to say about that. Got my crochet hook stuck in the middle of the ball. Oh, uh, yeah, so next one. I don't know why I'm sitting like this. Okay, <laughs> next whip is another My Favorite Things knitwear pattern, because I'm obsessed. So I need to figure out how this is laying. Oh yeah, okay, there we go. So this is um, cardigan number six, 
and it's so pretty oh you can't you can't really i should hold it up to the back but yeah so it is um my first time working with um mohair just by itself i've used it in the past um held together with um other yarns to make it a little more stable but i saw this pattern and it was just like so gauzy and breezy and effortless looking um so the yarn is um drops kids silk in light beige and you can can you hear my needles clacking <laughs> um but yeah, it's got a really nice lace pattern to it. And I think it's just so pretty and gauzy. So this is the back. Um, you, you knit this section and then you pick up for the first front section and then the next front section, um, knit those sections and then combine it at the bottom. Um, and yeah, I, it's, this pattern has a lot of charting to it which I usually don't do a lot of. It's not like I avoid it or anything, but it just seems that the patterns that I get are often just written. Um, so it's been kind of a learning curve. I feel like I had to kind of restart some of this stuff because I thought I knew what I was doing and then I realized I was reading the chart completely wrong. Um, but it's looking really good and I'm really happy with it. Um, I think I've been uh knitting and purling through the back loop just to give it more of like a clean look because i just really like um how single like one row of ribbing looks just with the um uh the twisted rib i just think it looks so clean um the other ones are totally fine i'm just a crazy person but yeah, I think it's just so pretty and I'm so excited to wear it. Um, I've heard that mohair is actually pretty warm and pretty strong. Because once I wet block it, it's going to like fluff up a lot and fill in the holes. But it is more of a lace pattern. So it might just be more of like a layering piece. But I uh, don't mind that at all. Um, I was going through my sweaters, just all the sweaters that I own. Um, and bringing them out from hibernation now that it's getting a little bit colder uh, and I realize they don't have enough cardigans that I'm super happy with so this is gonna be an excellent addition and I'm excited about it um oh I didn't mention it's um it's three uh balls of mohair like it's mohair held triple so I got my little donuts um, I think it's going to take like 13 skeins, but the drops silk was actually very reasonably priced. So we'll see how it lasts. And yeah, I'm really liking the color too. I, the one in the pattern was in white and I'm not the greatest with white, even though the last project I just showed you was white. So I don't know what I'm talking about, <laughs> but yeah, that is number two. And then number three, oh, I've been obsessively knitting on this one. Um, this is kind of a newer one. Um, so this is, um, what are you? You are the Sunday Tea by Petite Knit. And it is in the yarn uh, Knitting for Olives uh, Cotton Merino in Rust. And it's so pretty. This color, it just speaks to me. I don't know how to show this off really well, but oh yeah, there we go. Uh, yeah, so this is a um, top-down knit uh, t-shirt and it has the ribbing along the yoke and then it goes into stockinette stitch and then the sleeves um, and it's just so pretty. It's so nice. I It's just been very mindless to knit. Uh, so I've been watching a lot of, I watch a lot of YouTube videos and knitting podcasts and things. So this one has been really nice to I just knit on while I'm watching something else and it has the um the double collar which I think just looks really nice um so you knit six rows then purl then knit six rows and then you pick up um and knit together um your cast off row and then it just looks so neat and tidy and I love it I'm a big fan uh this is the first petite knit uh pattern I've ever knit and I'm already in love. All of her, I want to knit everything that she does because everything is just so 
classic and and minimal but so beautiful so maybe if i finish when i finish this t-shirt i'll want to make the sunday sweater <laughs> we'll see i've got a lot of knitting patterns on my list that i really would like to knit uh so little time too many knitting patterns um do i have anything else to say about this no not really this is what i was knitting on um in the park today it was just so nice Alrighty, is that no i have another actually i have a f i have a few more i have a few more <laughs> so i have they're tangled up in my headphones there we go all righty so i'm knitting on some socks um these are the ganoid oh don't do sorry a stitch is about to escape saved saved the day um, so this is the ga Ganoid, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but it's probably fine. Um, the Ganoid socks, um, they're a free pattern as well, um, and, I th and they are color work, and I'm knitting them in, I think this is Spoonie yarn, um, from Eastex. I bought this while I was in Iceland, I just like bought like one skein of each of these colors thinking I was gonna do something with them and that was like what the heck am I gonna use that for <laughs> but um yeah I got rid of the tags so I couldn't remember what yarn it was I knew it was E6 because I bought it at uh the hand knitting what is it hand there's association of Iceland and they were pretty much just selling East X yarn. And they were selling like the most beautiful Lopi sweaters, but they were like $300 each. And I was not gonna do that. I know it's worth it, I know, but it's a lot to drop on a sweater, especially something I have to bring back internationally. Um, but yeah, so I did a bit of a research. Hello, kitty, you're back? She'll probably scream in the background. Um, so I did a bit of research on the Eastex website and the colors, I think, I think with, based on the colors and based on the texture of the yarn, I'm pretty sure it's Spoonie. Uh, I could be pronouncing it wrong as well. Uh, let me know if I'm completely butchering it. But yeah, so this is, uh, color work socks. I think I'm also using kind of a thicker yarn. What? What? What is it? You coming over? You wanna come up? No? Okay. Um, where was I? Yes, yeah, so these are color work socks. Uh, they have kind of a uh, scale shape. I don't know if you can see. Oh, yeah, you can kind of see. It's not the like greatest contrast of colors. Um, but I'm okay with that. I really was looking hard for a pattern where I could use these two in socks and um, this seemed to be the best, best one. Um, but yeah, I really like the color combination. I love blues and greens and I'm really excited to wear these. I think I'm probably going to end up just wearing them as house socks because uh, the Spoonie is just uh, uh, merino wool doesn't have any nylon in it and I hear that just wool socks don't wear as well when you're wearing them with boots and things like that so I'm probably gonna stick to that and keep these nice but yeah I think I very rarely do color work it just it's not something I enjoy doing but this one's been really nice because it's just two colors and very it doesn't have like more than four stitches or maybe no it doesn't have more than like seven stitches um for floats so i think it's turning out pretty cute i'm really knitting at it very slowly <laughs> again color work is not my favorite and i don't know why i decided to do it but i think it's looking pretty cute and i'll be excited to wear them around the house when it's cold Okay, next whip. Ah, uh, yes. So, got my basket. 
So I started knitting on the uh, half and half wrap by uh, Pearl Soho. There's a knit along going on for it. I'm not going to make it in time <laughs> finishing it. Um, so I won't win a prize, but knitting's not about winning prizes anyway. But um, yeah, so I'm doing it in the big size. There's big and bigger. And I'm knitting it in uh, the first indie dyed yarn I've ever bought. It's very exciting. So it's Red Door Fiber Studio, um, their fingering yarn. It is um, Superwash Merino. Uh, and it is in the color Horse Girl. And oh my god, I just fell in love with it when they posted it, when she posted it. Um, it was part of Ken Yarn's uh, summer camp. I think that's what it was. And I, a lot of the colors were very bright and like in your face, which is totally fine if that's what you're into. But I just saw this more like muted color and I just thought it was so pretty. Like, look at the, oh, I just think it's so nice. It's got flecks of, so it's like um, a white with kind of a light purpley mauve. And then it has flecks of brown and green in it. And I just think it's so pretty. I can't really stretch the full thing out because it's still on my needles. But I finished the ha this half of it. And then I'm waiting to do the other half because I ordered more indie dyed yarn from uh, Red Door Fiber Studios um, with her um, A Court of Thorn and Roses release. I've never really read those books, but the, the colors were just so beautiful. Um, so I, there's like a taupey brown, kind of a similar color to the, the like mauvey color that I'm getting for the other half. And I'm so excited. I ordered it in the pre-order and she like dyes them as she gets the orders. And she even said, she's like, I'm going to be dying for this collection until, uh, 2022. So I'm in no rush. I've got this half done and I'm just waiting on the other but I really like this yarn it's the fingering weight and it's the super wash um so it probably would make good for socks I actually have quite a bit left over um I thought I wasn't but it's kind of exciting that I have some left over because I think well because I'll be getting two skeins of this is two skeins and then I'm getting two skeins of the other color um I can't what's that name called did I write it down Oh yeah, um, I ordered uh, Fine is Great. <laughs> I don't really understand the names, but the colors are really pretty, so. Um, but yeah, what was I saying? Oh yeah, so I have this left over. So I'm thinking I'm gonna have leftovers of that Fine is Great color. And I think that a pair of socks in these would look really nice. So I'm kind of excited that I have some leftovers. I could have made the bigger size probably it would have been fine but I don't want to rip it all out and I, now I get to make another pair of socks but yeah I think that's all I have to say about that just look at this look at this section with all like the the green and the brown I just think it's so nice and I'm so excited to wear it but again I'm not in a rush <laughs> all right back in its bag Oh no, don't take, go ahead, take, don't get tangled up. Okay, we're good. And then I think I just have one more whip, which <sighs> I'm really dragging my heels on. It's been taking a while for me to get through it, but um, another color work project. Again, I don't love doing them as much, but um, this is for somebody special for a Christmas present. Uh, this person um, has been asking for this for a long time. And so this year I decided I was gonna do it. So it is um, The Far Isle Cardigan by Bruce Weinstein. It's in that um, Boyfriend Sweaters book that I uh, love so much and have knit so many things from it. So this is all I freaking I, I started this like a month ago and this is all I freaking have done of it because 
and it's just like because it's just it's three color so it's just a lot of carrying a lot a lot of floats in the back like look at that <laughs> that was a nightmare <laughs> but it's turning out so nice i know it's gonna look great when it's done it's just the during part that's hard and it does the fair isle section on the bottom and then I'll knit the top and it won't have anything so that'll be really easy to whip off and it's knit in um wool and wool, wool and the gang's super trooper yarn and it's quite nice because I wanted to get something that was super wash for this person um so that this person doesn't have to hand wash the sweater they can kind of wash it in the, in the washing machine and then air dry it. I don't know if I trust them for doing that, but no offense, but um, yeah, what else do I have? Oh yeah, it's knit in pieces. So I haven't knit something in pieces in a while. So it's like the back and forth, I think also is what is making me not want to do it, but it's looking really, really nice. Yeah, the colors, I did I write down the colors? I did. Um, so the the navy is midnight blue, uh, and then the gray is moon dust gray, and then the blue is duck egg. Let me open that a little bit up. It's kind of lumpy looking right now, but I'm hoping once I block it out, it won't be as lumpy. I think I also just need to like fix some of the stitches so that they look even. Again, I don't do color work very often, so whenever I do, it kind of doesn't look, always look the greatest, but it'll be fine. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. <laughs> I feel like I'm more telling myself that, but... Um, I don't know if I have anything else to say about this. That's probably it. Yeah. I think that's all my whips, as of now. I've just been in a crazy habit of just, like... I've been buying so much yarn lately. <laughs> stupid i don't know who i think i am i don't know why i think i can afford it. well i can't afford all of it but like i need to calm down i only have two hands so i can only knit so many things um but yeah that segues us into my yarn acquisitions um if you don't care about this part you can totally just exit out and I'll say goodbye here to those people but I really enjoy watching people's yarn acquisitions it's kind of bad because a lot of the times I end up adding that yarn onto my list of things I want to buy even with patterns too I'm like oh no that's going on the list um but yeah some of this yarn is a part of my whip some of my whips so yeah I'll just go through what I got so I have a big old bag of Drops Kid Silk. Again, this is my first time working with mohair and the Drops Kid Silk. And I had I got about 13 gains of it. That's what the pattern uh said to do, but it's just so fluffy. It just looks like a cloud. I think it's so nice. And again, this is in uh light beige. And I am, for that cardigan, I'm holding, uh, holding it triple. Um, I brought it, we went to visit my cousins a little bit ago, and we were all sitting around the fire, and I was knitting like a weirdo, and my cousin was like, that is the thinnest yarn I've ever seen. I was like, yeah, yeah, you're pretty much right. So, it's, it's, it's quite fluffy. I feel like it's not coming, oh yeah, there we go. You can really see the fluff factor the fluff factor <laughs> but yeah it's been really fun to work with um it does get all over me but that's fine <laughs> um yeah I'd never used anything from drops before so this is my first time I think I bought this stuff from like wool warehouse that was like in the UK and I didn't know if it was like a legit site and was kind of like I didn't drop a ton of money so that if I lost out on it I I'd be bummed but it wouldn't be a catastrophe um, but it came here successfully and I was very very happy for that <laughs> and I kind of like that it's all in the bag 
because then I can I could probably put my project in the bag too but probably not for a little bit because it's full of yarn all right next thing oh I think I have more hair in my mouth I'm gonna drink some water. <laughs> That's also one of the problems with mohair is that you get it in your mouth all the time. Well, yeah, all right. Next yarn acquisition. I have, still in the bag. <laughs> uh, this is the Bernat Softy Cotton. Uh, this one is in the color cotton, I believe. Uh, so it is the same yarn as what I used for my camisole number three. Um, I really liked it. Uh, it is acrylic and cotton, but it's very light. It's very soft and shiny. And there was a shawl pattern that I kind of wanted to make just for a summer shawl. I'm a little bit late on that, but, um, and I think this will be really nice. I think the pattern is by It's Carrie. She has like a YouTube channel and she posts a lot of her tutorials there. Um, and I think it'll be really nice. I think it'll be, yeah, good for summer, um, good for wearing to weddings, because I do wedding DJing. So I think it'll be a nice wrap for, like, summer evenings when it gets a bit cooler, um, but I don't need a full sweater. Um, yeah, and then maybe one day if I ever get married, which, who knows, maybe I'll just wear that. That'll be cute. Um, but yeah, I had, in I had initially wanted to buy the cotton, like the white but when I bought the sandstone color uh but they were out so I ended up buying that and then this book came in uh stock and your inspiration was having a free shipping sale not I guess not a sale they were doing free shipping <laughs> so of course I had to freaking do it so not like again not like I need any more yarn okay then I uh, went to my local yarn shop. I haven't really been going there enough, but with COVID it's been kind of hard because it's a very small store and you can only have one person in there shopping at a time. Um, but well, my big purchase was I bought a yarn swift, which was so exciting. Um, I've had a few hanks of yarn that I've had to ball up and I kind of just put them around my knees and do it that way. And it's so so annoying it's so annoying to do it that way so I uh ordered it online and then went and picked it up and then of course when I went in the store oh the store is called a uh, needle in the hay uh it's it's magical it's so lovely in there um it's right next door to a plant store and that's the worst thing that's ever happened to me <laughs> They have taken so much of my money, but uh, yeah, so then when I went in to go pick up my yarn swift Of course, I was like, well, I'm just gonna have a look around. I was like, I'm not gonna buy any yarn But I'm just gonna look I left with yarn because it's me. So they're not uh, They're not on their hank form anymore. I did ball them up, but um, It is Brooklyn Tweed's shelter yarn in um, art the color artifact. So it's this really lovely uh, kind of hunter green color how am i gonna do this you can kind of get the get the gist and it's in a worsted weight it is a hundred percent um i can't remember how to pronounce it, like tangian wool and it's definitely more on the rustic side it's a little bit more on the itchy side um i usually kind of go for like softer yarns because my skin's a little bitch and doesn't like itchy things but um i want to make a hat with this so I I think the pattern said I could use one skein but I kind of want to make the hat a little bit longer because I do like the flapping in the breeze bit on the hat uh, so I got two skeins and I'm really excited to cast on with these when I balled these up with the yarn swift it was so lovely and so fast it was so much faster so I'm a convert I'm never going back. Um, next thing on my list to get is uh, a, uh, a yarn baller. Cause I want to do that, but I gotta. I'm gonna hold off for a little bit because I don't desperately need it. I didn't desperately need the Swift either, but here we are. But yeah, I'm quite excited to get into 
working with some more rustic yarns. Uh, I watch a lot of uh, Knitting Traditions podcast. I love her. I think she's just the greatest. Uh, she knits way more than I do and she's a doctor so I don't really know how she does that. But she uses a lot more rustic yarns and I've been kind of inspired, excuse my knee, I've been kind of expi inspired to delve into that a little bit. But yeah, I think I only really have one more yarn acquisition. And again, it's the Knitting for Olive. Oh yeah, that was Knitting for Olive Cotton Merino in the color Rust. And that's what I'm using for what are you screaming about? Be fine. Um this is what I'm using for the Sunday tea by Petit Knit. Um and it's been really nice so far. It is 70% cotton and 30% wool. Um I didn't realize it was that high of a content of my cat is right here. What are you doing, Tiki? Oh, we got a grumpy goose on our hands. What do you think you're doing? My feet don't smell good, Chucky. She's weird. <laughs> um, you might see her tail in here again. Well, you did before, so you will again. Um, why are you sniffing my feet so hard? Did you lick my foot? You're weird. Why you like feet? But yeah, um, it would have more of a cotton content than I had realized, which is totally fine. Um, and it's my first time using anything from Knitting for Olive. I have been stalking their website like a crazy person. I feel like I have so many patterns that I have written in my phone that's like, use this yarn from Knitting for Olive. Um, so this is me delving into it, into kind of a smaller project. Um, but I really do want to use their merino and then uh, their, uh, I think it's, is it soft silk? Uh, mohair, I think. The color range is just beautiful. It's just so stunning. Um, but I bought this from uh, the Knitting Loft in Toronto, um, just online. It's, I have discovered that place and it's, they sell so much yarn it's insane. It's changing my life. And again, that's pretty close to where I live. So the shipping cost isn't, the shipping cost, the shipping cost isn't that bad. So yeah, I think that's everything I have for acquisitions. Cool. It's not as bad as I thought, but I do have a lot of yarn that is coming in. Again, I'm waiting for, um, Red Door Fiber Studios uh, yarn to come in from the um, Accord of Thorn and Roses collection. Um, and then I just bought some yarn from uh, Ken Yarn, just released uh, a new collection. It's so pretty. Um, I really put it in my basket and I was like, no, don't do it. And then I went back and was like, no, don't do it. And then I ended up buying it. So, but I think I'm going to just knit socks with that. So I only really bought like one skein of the two colors that I liked. And then I think I bought more. Yeah. Yeah. I got some more from Wool and the Gang, um, for the Fair Isle sweater that I am knitting because I thought I had enough and I do not because I don't read the pattern to see how much yarn is required. <laughs> so those are coming in the mail. My roommates probably think I'm an insane person because I get packages constantly. And again, I only have two hands, so I can only knit so much. What? What is it, Bubby? Don't. Okay. Just come over here. <laughs> She's a wily little thing. Yeah, I'm talking about you. She's usually... She usually sits behind the camera, but she's, I don't know, today she's a wily little creature who just wants to walk around and scream a little bit. But yeah, so that's all my knitting whips, finished items, and my yarn acquisitions. So I thought maybe I would just do some knitting and talk about how my life's going. Do could I feel like it? 
So yeah, where to start? It's been a while. I have been working a lot. I work at a spa and things have been picking up. I just uh, moved to a new spa right a month before we went into third lockdown, so that was fun. Um, but now I've been working there for a few months and it's been great. It's been so nice. My boss is very chill, so she kind of lets me do as I please. And uh, it's been really great for if I want to book off days. It's been really easy um, because I also work uh, doing wedding DJing. So that has been a huge thing recently. Um, things have slowed down a little bit because it is October, but... Um, I did like a wedding every Saturday for three months, I think. And that's been fun. It can be stressful sometimes, um, but it's been really fun to be out and, you know, people are really excited to see other people, but some people go absolutely off the rails. So, <laughs> you know. The drinking is heavy and again as the DJ I am usually there until like between midnight and 2 a.m. and the people around those hours are usually pretty drunk so and a lot of the weddings have been outdoors like the reception being outdoors as well because you can have higher numbers of people due to COVID um, when you're outdoors as opposed to being in a reception hall and it's also a lot, a lot of them have been on private property as well so on those ones just like people are just drinking their faces off and sometimes it's not a super fun when you have to be watching out for people but you know it's part of the job and it doesn't happen very often that i have to really get at people but yeah, it's been really fun and I feel a lot more comfortable doing it now. I feel like I started doing it um, the summer of 2019. Yeah, 2019. And I just was so nervous all the time because it's, it's stressful because you obviously don't want to screw up someone's wedding day with like a plunder with the music. Um, but I feel like now I just, I know what I'm doing. I got my setup down pat and... I can roll with the punches and I know kind of what to expect because most weddings go the same. I, I, there can be things in different orders, but you know, pretty much the same thing happens every time. So, so yeah, that's been really fun and getting me out of the house and it's been an excuse to dress up. I usually wear like a blazer and some, uh, you know, fancier pants and a nice top, but it was so hot in August that a couple times I just wore dresses because it was just so hot. And you're setting up your equipment outdoors. You're just sweating like pig. <laughs> so, but it's been, it's been good. Things have been good. Um, mostly just been hanging out with my cat. <sighs> have I really been doing anything else? No, I've mostly just been... Um, we've been hanging out with some extended family actually, which has been really nice. And uh, they got a cottage in uh, Bancroft near us. And me and my mom went up for a day and we did some kayaking, which was super nice. And then uh, we did Thanksgiving on Saturday. Um, went out to go visit them and it was so much fun. Uh, it's been really nice spending time with extended family. Um, but yeah, I don't know what else has been going on. Can't really think about a lot. Well, there's obviously not a ton going on because I'm still being kind of, well, more cautious with COVID. Um, well, I'm more of an introvert anyway, so I, I'm in my home knitting a lot. So <laughs> watching YouTube videos and just knitting. But, uh, yeah, I'm really trying to think of things to say, but it's difficult. <laughs> oh, my, yeah, we've all mostly just been hanging out with my cat. She has been escaping the house recently. Every time I open the door 
to leave if she tries to run out. So that's been interesting. And then she got she got conjunctivitis because cats can get conjunctivitis because the nasty little demon decided to play around in her poop and then touch her eyeballs. So $200 later from a vet appointment, I had to give her eye drops and she had to wear the cone. Oh, she was miserable. She was, I've never seen a more miserable kitty in my life. I'm trying to give her eye drops. Oh my god, I had to chase her around the house and then like pin her down. I'm like, this is for your own good. But she's fine now, it's all cleared up, which is good. She only really had to wear the cone for about two days and then uh, it's pretty much cleared up after that. But I had an expensive vet bill. I'm new to the pet life, so this <laughs> is interesting. Just having a sudden animal medical emergency that you have to pay for. It's not really, well, it wasn't really an emergency, but I kind of was like, oh my god, her eye looks irritated, I don't know what it is, and then you Google things, and it's like, oh, your cat's dying. You're like, what? <laughs> She's not dying. But, yeah, so I'm new to this whole pet life, but it's been fun. She makes it fun. She's so cute, as much as she's a demon. She's very cute. But yeah, that's about it. Oh yes, Halloween is coming up. I don't really have any plans the day of. I'm putting together my Halloween costume because I love Halloween. Um, and then me and my roommates have been watching some spooky movies, which has been really fun. We did that last year a lot too. And it's just so much fun. I'm not really into like really really scary movies, especially like the ghosty ones, the ones with the jump scares. Like I really don't enjoy like paranormal activity or like conjuring or stuff like that. Um, it really keeps me up at night, <laughs> especially when it's in a home. It's like I live in a home! <laughs> but uh, I do kind of like the more like slasher ones, they're kind of fun. Or the really old ones, you know, like the original Halloween and scream and friday the 13th and stuff like that it's quite fun to watch because it's so kitschy <laughs> uh so me and my friend a couple years ago uh we got tickets to see the original halloween in theaters and that was such a fun day um i hope they bring some more uh older horror films into the theaters this this october because i would definitely be down to do that yeah, I do have one more wedding to DJ uh, on the 23rd, um, and then that'll be it. This season went by so fast. Well, I feel like I've just been like running around like a crazy person because I wasn't working for so long, and then I was working a lot, <laughs> and my body was like, what are you doing? <laughs> but yeah, things have calmed down a little bit, which is nice. So I have more time for knitting. <laughs> but yeah, um, my parents are getting ready to go down to Florida. They are snowbirds and COVID's not going to keep them from going down to Florida. So they're very excited about that. They want me to come visit for Christmas. Um, but we'll see how my work schedule is looking so and when my brother can do it too because he is in Montreal so we kind of have to coordinate when we're gonna go because we want to go down at the same time and it all depends on I can book things off a little bit easier than he can at his work so yeah that'll be fun so maybe there'll be a Florida trip I'm kind of nice I feel like I've been like getting this feeling that I really want to travel but again I've been more hesitant because COVID some people just were like we're going I don't know about that but you know it is what it is so yeah I think that's about all I have to say it's been almost an hour so yeah if you like what you see uh subscribe hit the like button. Um, my Instagram is cute and crusty. I will put that in the link below along with uh, all the other 
patterns and yarns that I talked about. I will have links below. And yeah, it's been nice chatting. I hope you enjoyed your day. I hope you enjoy your week, your month. Hopefully this year has been okay too. I don't know where this year has gone. I feel like I blinked and all of a sudden it's October. <laughs> it's crazy. But yeah. Well, enjoy your day. Enjoy your evening. And I'll talk to you sooner than I did last time. <laughs> all right. Bye, guys. Bye.